closed fireworks stores. There's two others down the road, all com all competing fireworks stores, three in a row, and this one looks very much closed. some shade here a second. Let's see where we've been and where we're going. Okay, so basically we came up on this route here out of Mass into Vermont, just hit Brattleboro, crossed over the that bridge into New Hampshire. Um, I believe we're on this 119, so we're just going to loop back down and head head back down here so that'll be a from about down here to Connecticut back up here we went touched on the corner of Vermont over to New Hampshire and then back down to our final destination with the Zenith covered up in the back seat as it's really hot today and the last thing to do is to get some gas because we are we haven't gotten gas since Connecticut well, we're dangerously low on fuel. I know there's a gas station up there at the end of that stretch, but there can be a lot of windy, uh, desolate roads out here between gas stations. So we'll see if there's anything in the remote vicinity. If not, we'll go back towards that Walmart. Yeah, these folks there at the tire store there say we're about halfway in between. So we're gonna go back towards the Walmart to get some gas because I'm not risking going forward. nothing to put in the tank to substitute for gas. I once ran out of gas with a Volkswagen Rabbit some time ago, years ago, in the middle of the night. Everything was closed and I found two bottles of dry gas in the trunk in the back and that's what got me that's what got me home two bottles of dry gas. I don't even have dry gas in this. Alright, well we passed the Walmart. Now we're back towards the way we came and we're going to get some go-go juice here. Two things I like. Fix up spills. 362 and it has the lock so you can lock it while you fuel which most states you cannot to enter our home state again so we're not yelled at and I noticed the uh, Northfield drive-in take a little gander it's a no smoking drive-in driven through the drive-in poles in a while. Or bang into one. Or forget to remove the speaker. Let's get 
it out and take a quick peek. I never knew this place even existed. And there's the snack bar. Okay, well, we'll close out with this. So there's a sign out on the lawn here, a state sale, and we're just going to network with the gentleman here. He showed me in the house quickly. Um, try and find a... Uh, come and put some feelers out for the uh, vintage color set. I'm on the prowl for, for a roundy still. A good one. I do always get a kick out of these old light fixtures. It's interesting, a single side band. Single side band, FM, LW, MW, SW. Synthesized tuning. I have to become more familiar with this single side band business. This is obviously a world radio. And we'll see how much this is. RF B45. Got some bird dropping in there. Not even FAS FM. Single side band. I bet you those are. They leaked because it turned color, so. I'm sure that's going what it would need. Actually, it doesn't look too bad in there. This is probably for some kind of stand. Made in Japan. Let's see how much this radio goes for. Get some focus. Well, the here. radio was 20. I didn't feel it was quite worth that. He sort of knew what it was, being a world band radio, but uh, without being able to test it. I offered five, but he didn't go for it, so. Eh, better luck next time. We'll keep our eye out for something like that. It looks as though it came from up north Canada way or something but, uh, We'll continue on Finalize the trip these where I'm from too. You don't want to tailgate a, a tractor. Uh, you know people are tailgating me. It's a no passing zone. So he'll be turning off soon. These guys usually don't go very far anyway. I decided to take a detour on a middle of nowhere journey on home here. You can see the dotted line is the state line back to New Hampshire. We're not going that way. We're just going up a little further. See if we can uh, catch the mechanic uh, at quick time. Not to have any work done, just to schedule and to add to the pile. Not only is the bearing the noisemaker, but the uh, I forgot that the caliper is sticky and it sounds like it's acting up. Along with a warped rotor, but that's nothing we haven't been through before. Okay, 
back at home base we'll take one last look at the at the zenith it's been in the car all very hot today and uh, he said he did lift the platter off but he he knew well enough to leave well enough alone. It is stopped up. It was stuck in cycle. It does have a, uh, it's a VM 1200, maybe 1267, a little later model. Um, it is mono though. It has that, I believe it's the three volt high output cartridge there, but uh, nonetheless, this can be, uh, we can put a, a stereo modern pickup in it. It does have the 78 tip, the LP, Seems kind of uh, doesn't feel so good. Uh, has little vents on the side. We'll try to save the uh, the fact the original amplifier. We'll see whether it's a germanium or whatnot. The uh, white plastic. I guess this can be uh, whitened up with some hydrogen peroxide and and whatnot. Uh, the chrome. Yeah, the chrome is uh, a little bent here. Maybe it can be removed there. Let's get a model number on this. Uh, I don't know where, that's the cord wrapped there. I don't know where the model number is kept on this, but we'll look it up. It's got kind of a, a space agey looking design. And I imagine the model number is on the inside or the bottom or, or somewhere. I have no model. There's a few missing screws. So someone's been in here, but Nonetheless, there you have it. I don't even want to pick it up by the handle. I just want to get it back. The Zenith solid state. Uh, I'd date this about yeah, mid-60s. Germanium, we'll see. Okay, I just want to include this maybe in the trip. After our trip, we have the car in the lift. Uh, what's been changed? We did the, uh, the rotor. I didn't do it. Here we are back at the, uh, the front end of the car. Uh, the noise that we've been hearing. I put in new shoes. I I didn't. I'm having a, a gentleman do it, which are few and far between uh, car mechanics, I'm telling you. Um, I have a new spindle off another car, a rotor, uh, the bearing and spindle hub assembly off another car. I'll show you the old one over here that was making noise. Uh, a brake rotor used off of eBay, which uh, it did burp a little bit of rust, but it seems to be okay. Um, and uh, let me show you the this old. This is the one. old spindle assembly, and this bearing. The bearing is not not three. Probably put that in in March, and it's now it's like four months ago. Ah, uh, in the hub there, and it, it basically fell apart. There's the the race over there. Um, the, the replacement parts are just just don't hold up. It seems. And what's funny is over on the driver's side, when we put on the lift, the wheel kind of. Uh, let go here because the uh, top of the strut is uh, broken. He's going to set it back in there so when it's on the ground it'll drive, but uh, we need to replace this this strut here. And that's it. The driving is fun, but you have to you have to pay for it one way or the other. So the driving is fun, but uh, you do end up paying for it. But uh, love the road trips. I'm going to keep keep going. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Oh, it's raining. We're just going to take the car now for a quick test drive. Notice the brake light is on, but uh, the caliper was just changed, so, and that's the front end. We just go down the hill. So just take it down the hill. The brake light might be on because the fluid is low. The other light is our safety belt satisfy that. So yeah, it sounds good over there. Now it's quiet. Nice. The brake light is out. It's just the fluid level, I'm sure. There you have it. Okay, uh, one last note. It seems our uh, used caliper seems to be a bit sticky, although it may free up. Uh, it suggested we replace it with a new one, not a remanufactured. So this one, although we're, we're good for now, if it doesn't warp the new rotor, uh, we'll get a new we'll get a new caliper for the front, and we'll be good to go. 
bearing is nice.